This game was played in the 1919 Hastings Victory Tournament. This was the first international chess tournament since World War I. Capablanca ended up winning the tournament with an impressive victory of 10.5 points out of 11. In this game, we are going to look at the concept of trapped pieces in chess. If you can trap your opponent's piece, you can essentially render it harmless and make it as if your opponent was playing down the piece. So let's go ahead and take a look at this game. White is William Winter and starts off with e4, and Capablanca responds with e5. After knight f3, we see knight c6, knight c3, knight f6, bishop e5, and essentially Capablanca is playing the four knights defense. He responds with bishop b4, and we get this very symmetrical type of position. After castling from both sides, uh, white captures this knight, black takes back with the center pawn, and then we see d3. d3 is a good move, reinforcing white's control over the e4 pawn. So Capablanca drops the bishop back in order to give more support to this pawn on e5. White responds, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, and then we see c5. And here essentially Capablanca is hoping that Winter plays knight to d5 because he is then able to trap White's bishop on h4. c5 is also a good move because it helps Black control the center and prevents White from gaining too much space there. So after knight to d5 by Winter, a slight mistake, Black is able to play g5. Now this move is good because uh, it forces this bishop into the corner and here knight g5 doesn't work because black is able to capture this knight over here and end up a, a piece of immaterial. After pawn captures back, simply capture this knight and white is going to be down two pawns. So, therefore that is not playable and instead of capturing on g5 uh, white captures on f6 first and then moves the bishop back to g3. Now often in chess we talk about not moving the pawns in front of the king. Well there is an exception to every rule and in this instance it was a good idea for Capablanca to play g5. His king is not under any pressure or any type of direct threat not to mention after bishop to g4 White is going to have crippled pawns on the f-file and will not be in a position to attack Black's king. In addition to that, this bishop on g3 is trapped and is unable to get back into the game. It will be trapped for the remainder of the game. Here, uh, this bishop on g3 would not be that bad if White had a knight on d2, for instance, because on the next move, you might see something like f3 and then bishop out to f2 and white's able to get the bishop out so that is good but since the knight is on f3 Capablanca is able to play this really amazing bishop g4 follow-up move and after h3 bishop takes knight queen takes and after the queen's trade-off we see the idea behind bishop to g4 essentially these double pawns on the f-file is going to make it even harder for white to get this bishop out because he's not able to play f2, f3. White has to give up at least a pawn by playing f4 in order to try and get this bishop out. And it doesn't work out too well. Maybe let's just say pawn takes, bishop moves back, black could uh, push some pressure on this b2 pawn, you might see rook over, and then black could bring the rook to the center of the file, play c4, and look to double up rooks on the second rank. So this would be very difficult for white to defend. He would not only be down by a piece, or not a piece, he would not only be down by a pawn, but this bishop will still have trouble getting out. And even if something like king over f3 and eventually bishop g1 is played, even then black still has a lot of control over here on the queen side, so it would be very difficult for this bishop to finally go square. Not to mention by that time, black would have played c4 
and garden rooks on the, the second rank, making it very difficult for white to defend the position, being uh, down at least a pawn. So, let's go ahead and set this back up. Instead of going into that, uh, see the bishop was here, uh, white goes ahead and instead plays king out to g2. Actually, white just played g takes f3, so it's black's move, f6. And then we see king to g2, a5, looking to expand on the queen's side. White tries to stop black from having too much space, plays a4, king f7. Rook moves out to h1, king e6, and h4, a futile attempt to try and get this bishop back into the game. Essentially, it's as if white is playing down a piece. After h4, we see rook f to uh, b8, pawn captures, pawn captures, after b3, c6, rook a2, b5. And essentially all Carl Blanca needs to do is open up the queen side and his extra piece on the queen side will allow him to win some material. Look on h to a1 trying to hold on. c4 is being played. a takes b5. Pawn captures this way. Captures back. Rook takes b5. And then we see rook a4 trying to uh, hold on to the game. Rook takes b3, c d4, rook out to b5, rook c4, rook b4, and then we trade off another set of pawns, and we can see here that black has enough material to win. He is simply up a pawn here on the queen side. We'll be able to push this pawn down the board, and it's really nothing that uh, white can do. To stop it. The rooks are poor blockaders of that pass pawn. Not to mention it is on the same color. Uh, the queen square is on the same color as this bishop. And once again, white's bishop on g3 is trapped and is unable to participate in the game. So thank you for watching. And this was a really famous chess game played by Capablanca in the 1919 Hastings Victory Tournament. So this is a very important tournament and it illustrates this game illustrates the concept of a trout piece how to take advantage of it and how to try and avoid it from happening thanks for watching